Meshtastic is all the craze today in the tech scene. It reminds me of the old CB radio days when you'd see the early 90s Chevy Suburbans with their massive antennas, except today we have devices like this. In this video, we're gonna go through the basic setup of getting a Meshtastic node set up as a client and having two or more TAC devices talk to each other over the Meshtastic network. The process is repeatable for as many devices you'd like to bring online. And for those of you that watch until the end of the video, I have some bonus content for you where I'll be showing you how to use one of these Meshtastic devices as a TAC tracker. For this walkthrough, I'll be using a pair of Lilygo T-beams. I really like these. They're on the bigger side of for a Meshtastic device, but they have built-in GPS, which I really like. I also have a Helltech V3, which has a bit smaller footprint, but no built-in GPS. I haven't had the opportunity to get my hands on a rack wireless device, which most rave about. They are modular and have the flexibility of being spec'd out for different applications, such as a solar powered repeater. I have affiliate links to everything down in the description in case you decide you want to pull the trigger on one of these devices and feel like supporting the channel at no extra cost to you. So first and foremost, before we can get started, it is important to make sure to flash the latest Meshtastic firmware on your device if you haven't done so already. You definitely want to double check because sometimes these devices come pre-flashed with a Meshtastic firmware, but it's not always the latest. The process is really simple. Connect your battery so that your Meshtastic appliance powers on and plug it into your computer via USB. Head over to flasher.meshtastic.org. Once you are there, go ahead and click on select target device. Go ahead and choose the appropriate option. In my case, I have to scroll down since I'm using Lily Go T beams because it falls under community supported devices. Choose your desired firmware. I personally like sticking to stable releases. Then click flash. You'll see a DOS like box pop up with the progress of the firmware install. Once it's completed, you're able to disconnect the device from your computer and begin the initial setup through the Meshtastic app. If you don't have the app downloaded already, go ahead and download it from the Play Store. Secondly, we need to make sure Bluetooth is enabled. Now we're gonna go into the Meshtastic app, scan for Bluetooth devices and choose a device that has the matching device name shown at the bottom of the Meshtastic device screen. Once you choose a device, it should pop up with a code for you to enter in so that you can successfully connect to your radio. From here, really quickly, we're going to go into radio configuration and change a couple settings. First, we're gonna go into device and change the role from client to TAC. Then scroll down and click send. Next, we're gonna wait for the device to receive the setting. Then we are gonna go back out to the main settings page and click LoRa. From there, we're gonna update our region and click send. Now that we have our Meshtastic radio connected and configured, the next crucial step is to tie Meshtastic and ATAC together via the Meshtastic plugin. You can find this on the Meshtastic GitHub page. I dropped the link in the description for you guys in case you need it. It's important to note that these plugins are version specific, so you will need to make sure you download the appropriate one for your version of TAC. This is really simple to find. Right in TAC, go to settings, then click about. Right on the bottom left of the page, you will see the ATAC version. Once you have the APK downloaded, go ahead and install that plugin. Once the plugin is installed, you may need to enable it in TAC. So to do this, click the menu icon on the top right, 
scroll down and open plugins. That should show you your list of plugins for TAC. You should see Meshtastic plugin with a checkbox under it. If the box is checked off, it should say loaded to the right of it and you are all set to move forward. If not, go ahead and check that box off so that the plugin is loaded. And lastly, we now have to configure TAC so that it pulls GPS from Meshtastic. First, we open our menu and go to settings, then tool preferences, specific tool preferences, and then Meshtastic plugin. From there, you're gonna see an option that says, use Meshtastic as GPS. We wanna go ahead and enable that. Now, a quick disclaimer, it is completely normal and likely that your Meshtastic device will not pick up GPS right away. I've seen where it has taken up to half hour for my GPS to update, even in clear skies. Now that you have the Meshtastic plugin loaded, your setup is complete and TAC is now using your Meshtastic device for comms and GPS. An easy way to test this is to put your device in airplane mode and make sure that Wi-Fi and GPS are both shut off. Bluetooth, however, does need to remain on since that is how your phone stays connected to the Meshtastic radio. From here, TAC should still be showing your updated GPS location. Now that you've made it through the main part of the video, I have the bonus content for you, and I'm going to be showing you how to turn that Meshtastic radio into a TAC tracker. It's actually very simple. Right in your Meshtastic radio configuration, go into device. If you open up the roles menu, you will see TAC tracker. What this does is sets up the device as a standalone client, and it will pop up on your TAC map as its own individual client. This is a nice feature for tracking assets that don't need full blown tag, but you still would like to keep track of their location. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe, and keep supporting our effort and bringing you guys some solid content. And I will catch you guys on the next one.